Now here we have 10.6 solving a polynomial inequality problem type one. So we do have to do a testing method with this problem. So the first thing we're gonna do is try to figure out what the intervals are for the testing. And the way you do that is you set each one of these um, parentheses or each one of these factors equal to zero. So when I set this one equal to zero, I will get x equal to negative six. When I set this factor equal to zero, I will get x equal to one. And when I set this factor equal to zero, I will get x equal to four. And so those happen to already be in order, but I would put them on a number line in order. And the spacing doesn't matter. It's just a representation so that you can figure out what's going on. You pick a value in this interval. I'm gonna pick negative seven. In this interval, I'm gonna pick Every time I have a negative and a positive, I always pick zero. And in this interval, I'm gonna pick another number, maybe two. And then in this interval, I'm gonna pick another number, maybe five, okay? It doesn't matter what number you pick in the interval, just as long as the number is in the interval. And then what I'm gonna do with those is I'm going to plug them into this whole equation and see if it is true or false, okay? So I'm gonna have negative seven plus six, one minus negative seven, and then negative seven minus four. And so then I get a negative, it really doesn't matter the number, just the sign. This is going to be a positive, this is going to be a negative. And a negative times a positive times a negative will be a negative number. Are negative numbers less than or equal to zero? Yes, so this is true, okay? So in this region, it's true. Now we're gonna test the next number, zero. So zero plus six, zero minus, uh, I'm sorry, one minus zero, and zero minus four. So I get a positive here, I get a positive here, and I get a negative here. So when I multiply these, I end up with a negative there. Are negatives less than or equal to zero? Yes, so this is true again. So in this interval, we get true. Then we need to test two. So two plus six, one minus two, two minus four. Here we get a positive, here we get a negative, and here we get a negative. So we get positive in the end, and positive is not less than or equal to zero. This is false. So in this interval, we get a false statement. Now the last one, I'm gonna test five. Five plus six, one minus five, five minus four. I get a positive, a negative, and a positive. So that's gonna be negative in the end, and that is true. So this interval is true. Now we have to consider whether this inequality had a bar or not. This inequality does have a bar. So it will have a solid dot here, a solid dot there, and a solid dot there, okay? So when I go to write my intervals, I would write these two intervals and this interval as my final answer. Only the true intervals will be part of my final answer, okay? The, however, there's something interesting happening here. Even though I have two intervals, it really is seamless from one all the way to negative infinity because everything would be solid in and so is this point. So this whole entire section can actually be represented by one interval, and that is negative infinity all the way to one. And I use a bracket because there's a solid dot at one. Then I would also have to include this interval, which would be from four to positive infinity. 
So I just wanted you to have an example of what happens when you have the two true statements back to back with the solid dot in the middle. Now that's different from when you have two true statements with an open dot in the middle, which you will see in another um, video because there's four types and so it will pop up in one of those four types. So hopefully you're watching the videos for all four.